Alright, south is dealer. Everybody vulnerable. Uh, unfortunately, south's got a rather boring hand. Um, balance, 4 4 3 2. And we've only got 10 points, so unfortunately for us, we're going to pass. Out to west. Okay, west has got 7, 9, 11 points. Uh, this is close to an opening hand. The rule of 20 says it's not quite. 11 points plus the two longest suits. 5 and 3 is 8. 8 plus 11 is 19. So we don't meet the rule of 20. Some players would open 1 no trump, pretending it's 12 to 14. Um, I wouldn't, because the queen doubleton and queen trebleton don't really look like they're worth the full weight. So I think it's a pass. Be normal. Now to north. Hmm. North's also got a balanced hand that can't open the bidding. Uh, seven points, four, three, three, three. Nothing to say here. Pass. And finally to east. Aha! An opening hand. East has got seven, eight, twelve points. Um, a balanced twelve. Um, balanced twelve to fourteen. You have one no trump, so straightforward. One no trump. Now to south again. So I've still got nothing to say. Over one no trump to bid you would need something like a five card suit of good quality. Um, so if that were a heart, let's say, you could then bid hearts or you could bid Aspro or Landy or any of those conventions you like. As it is, we haven't got a five card suit, we haven't got enough points to, to double or anything like that. So nothing to do but pass. So responding to East one no trump bid, uh, they've got 12 to 14 balance. We've got 11 points balance, so there's a chance of game. There's a chance of game because our partner might have up to 14. Um, this depends as to whether you play full transfers or not. So a classic system would be two clubs would be stamen, two diamonds is a transfer to hearts, two hearts is a transfer to spades, two spades is whatever you want it to be, most people play that as a transfer to a minor and a weak hand, and then two no trumps, on top of all those, is invitational with 11 or 12 points and a balanced hand. That's absolutely fine, it's a perfectly sound system, and therefore with that system, two no trumps would be the right bid. So inviting your partner to bid three no trumps, if indeed they have a maximum. However, some players play full transfers, which means that two diamonds transfer to hearts, two hearts transfer to spades, two spades is a transfer to clubs, and two no trumps is a transfer to diamonds. Some players play that as known as full transfers. They're an advanced sequence, but, but actually they're quite useful when they come up. If that's the case, you can't bid two no trumps with this hand because that's a transfer to diamonds. And to transfer to a minor, you need six cards or more in that suit. So what you would have to do in that instance, if you were playing full transfers, is you would bid two clubs, which is stamen, which we don't care about because we haven't got a major. They bid two whatevers, and then you bid two no trumps, which shows 11 or 12. This is something known as non-promissory stamen. You're bidding stamen, but you're not promising a major for it. A disadvantage of playing full transfers, if you like. Um, to make my life easy, I'm going to say we're not playing full transfers, so I'm just going to bid two no trumps now, showing 11 or 12 balanced. But if you are playing full transfers, you'd have to go through stamen to do this. So two no trumps, the direct invite. Whenever your partner bids two no trumps after one no trump, it's always an invite to three no trumps, unless you agreed some conventional bid. Um, whether you bid one no trump as a responder, an overcaller, or, or rebid, or whatever, two no trumps is always bid three with a maximum. Um, so for our 12 to 14 range, we are not maximum. We have 12, we're not even close to maximum. If you had 13, you'd have to take a view. 14, you'd always bid three no trumps. With 12, we should always pass. That's exactly what we'll do here. So two no trumps is the final contract, and we're now looking to lead against that two no trump contract. So immediately, two suits are jumping out at me. Rather unsurprisingly, I'm looking at leading a spade or a heart. Um, it's a pure guess. A spade could be right if our partner's got king to four spades. A heart could be right if our partner's got queen to four hearts. We don't really know. Um, you should lead a heart because they're better, and therefore you require less points from your partner in that heart suit to, uh, to actually set your hearts up as winners. So I would lead fourth down of your longest and strongest, the classic no trump lead, so I'd lead the two of hearts. Okay, so two no trumps is the final contract. Um, we're looking to lead against no trumps. Um, obviously two suits are standing out to me. Spades and hearts are the suits we're going to lead. There are length suits. Um, Arguably, it's a guess. We could lead a low spade, hoping for our partner to have good spades, or a low heart, hoping for our partner to have good hearts. Um, the lead I'm going to opt for is a heart, because our hearts are our best suit. Fourth card down of your longest and strongest is the classic no trump lead. Um, you might be thinking, well, why wouldn't you lead the ace? Ace from ace king is often a good lead. To lead a, a sequence against no trumps, you need three cards in, in that sequence. You need three honours. So you would only lead the ace if you had ace king queen, or maybe ace king jack, known as a broken sequence. Um, to lead a, uh, an honour against no trumps, you would like three, three cards in a sequence. So queen-jack-10, you would lead the queen, but with queen-jack only, you would lead a small one. So for example, if I were leading this spade suit, I wouldn't lead the queen, 
I would lead a baby one. This is against no trumps. Against trumps, I would always lead the ace of hearts. But against no trumps, you need three in a sequence, so I would lead the baby heart here. Fourth card down would be longest and strongest, which is the classic no trump need. Right, down goes West's cards. Balanced hand with 11 points, as expected. So, looking at this hand, uh, in no trumps you want to try and count your top tricks and then work out where your extra tricks are coming from. So our top tricks here, we have, going from left to right, we have one diamond, we've got two spades, ace, king of spades, we've got no hearts, and we have one club. So that's one, two, three, four. We've got four top tricks. Um, we're looking for eight or more tricks, ideally, so our extra tricks uh, need to come from somewhere. Um, our extra tricks, basically, we have two chances, the, the clubs or the diamonds, a minor suit. Um, we could set the clubs up if the clubs are breaking nicely. Uh, we could finesse for king of clubs or something like that. If the clubs are breaking nicely, we might be able to make four club tricks instead of just one. If the diamonds are breaking nicely, we might be able to make four or five diamond tricks if the diamonds are, are positioned well. Um, this lead of a heart is bad. The reason the heart lead is bad is because our queen is basically threatened currently at this trick. Um, we're in a real, real tricky spot um, regarding the heart lead. So if we assume the hearts are dead and we're going to lose, let's say, four or five hearts, which is the most likely thing, um, we're going to need to play the diamonds and the clubs for no losers. So which suit is more attractive? Well, the reason the diamonds are more attractive is simply because we have one more of them. So we've got queen jack to five, opposite ace to three, so we have eight diamonds, whereas we only have seven clubs between the two hands. So this means we want to actually play the diamond suit, and we would like to lead them from there in the hope that we can play all the diamonds with the king of diamonds being on our right, we can finesse for the diamonds and set all of those diamonds up as winners. Um, your other alternative would be to play the clubs, but you need a 3-3 three, three break in clubs for the clubs to work, whereas you only need a 3-2 three, break in diamonds, and the diamonds, a 3-2 three, break is far, far more likely than a 3-3 three, three break. With regards to this particular trick, I've said we're doomed in hearts. There is a, there is a slim chance. The, the one chance we have is playing the queen of hearts in the hope the ace-king is on our left. Uh, they might be under leading ace king against no trumps, and that's basically our only chance. If we play small, for the small card to work, we would need this hand to play the ace or the king and not have the other one, um, which is really unlikely. They're probably more likely to play something like the ten or the jack or the nine or something trapping our queen on the table. So the correct card, albeit it's a bit of a Hail Mary, the correct card is to play the queen of hearts and hope the ace king is on, on our left. Uh, if the ace king is not on our left, so it goes queen and they play the ace or the king, the hearts are doomed. They were already doomed, I think. Um, interestingly, we can read into the two of hearts lead. The two of hearts is fourth down, you would imagine. So if they're being normal, if this defender is playing properly, if you like, fourth down, the two of hearts means they have exactly four cards. Because if they've led the fourth card down, they can't have any cards below the two. Which means the hearts are breaking four and four. Which is very good for us, because it means we will lose at most four heart tricks. Of course, the hearts could be five and three or six and two, and then we might lose, well, God, God knows, we might lose six heart tricks if everything goes wrong. But in the instance of the two of hearts lead, that suggests the hearts are four, four, which means we won't lose, lose as many hearts as possible. And of course, we've got the outside chance of the queen of hearts winning the first trick, which means we might only lose three hearts. Um, so I would play the queen of hearts from dummy. It's essentially a shot to nothing. If the queen loses, well, we were doomed anyway. If the queen doesn't lose, because the ace king of hearts on our left is a bonus trick for free. So that's what I would play. I'd play the Queen of Hearts from Dummy, and I'd be looking to set these diamonds up as soon as I get the opportunity to do so. Right, so we play the Queen of Hearts from the Dummy, and as you can see, it just so happens, from our perspective, Declarer's perspective, it's the miracle layout. Ace King of Hearts is on our left, which means the Queen of Hearts is actually going to hold the first trick, which is unbelievably lucky, um, but it's a bonus trick, and we needed them. Um, so yeah, that's a great, great start from Declarer's perspective. That Queen was essentially a Hail Mary, which worked. Obviously the hearts are wide open when we lose the lead, but that's okay because they were always going to win some hearts anyway. So we win the first trick, rather fortuitously win the first trick, and now we want to play the diamonds. The correct way to play the diamonds is to take the diamond finesse, lead the queen, if they play the king play the ace, if they don't play the king we'll, we'll play diamonds again. Um, when we lead the queen, the correct defensive play is to play low, although you might want to cover, you should cover the last honour from dummy. So we play low here. We play low, taking the diamond finesse, and that diamond finesse succeeds. The problem we now have is we do not have the ten of diamonds. So when we don't have the ten of diamonds, if we play the jack on the next round, we've just learned that the king of diamonds is very likely on our right. If we play the jack on the next round, they'll play the king, we'll play the ace, and the ten will be somewhere. So our chances have dwindled. 
um, with regarding diamonds. That's because we don't have the 10. If we had Queen Jack 10 9, we could just keep playing big diamonds from the table. So our only chance now is that the King Diamonds is on our right and is the only one left. Because if we play the Jack and it goes Jack King Ace, the 10 will be somewhere. Um, if we play low and the king pops up, our jack will be, then be able to win the 10. There is a slim chance if we play jack and the 10 is doubleton over there, it goes jack, king, ace, and the 10 falls, then 9 will be a winner. We're essentially to a guess in diamonds. As you can see, the diamonds are king, 10 here, so whatever we do, this defender will do whatever we don't. So if we play low, they'll play the 10, forcing us to play the ace. If we play the jack, they'll play their king, forcing us to play the ace, and setting up their 10. So this defender has a diamond trick, whatever we do. Um, so let's say we play low, they play the 10, we play the ace, they play little. The diamonds are broke 3-2, so that means we do have a diamond break, so there's only one diamond left, which is the king of diamonds, but unfortunately we're going to have to give in to a diamond. Often you'll have to lose a trick missing the king 10 and a few of them, because they'll simply be able to set the 10 up or set the king up um, in that world. However, we're still okay. If we lose a diamond to the king, they're going to win three hearts or four hearts, depending on how the hearts are breaking, but then we've got control of the hand, we've set the diamond tricks up. So I play a diamond, this hand would throw something away, almost certainly a club, um, because they want to keep their hearts in space. We play the jack, nine or seven, it doesn't matter, there's only one diamond missing. And they play the king, so they win that diamond. We couldn't avoid losing a diamond, the king ten on our right hand side meant we're always losing one. And now this hand is going to continue hearts. The, de the, de the defenders are going to play three rounds of hearts here, cashing out the heart suit. Unfortunately for us, the hearts were 4-4, four, four, which is what we expected from the two of hearts lead. The defenders now play three rounds of hearts, uh, most likely finishing in this hand. Jack of hearts wins, and then the ace king of hearts next. So we're going to have to find two discards. We're going to play one heart, and we're going to have to throw away two cards. Um, doesn't really matter, as long as we don't throw away big cards. Two, a small spade and, two, and a club is fine, or two clubs is fine. I would probably throw away two clubs. There's the three cards we're playing on the next hearts. They're playing their three heart tricks, like so. We're playing two hearts from the dummy, and we're throwing something away. The only thing I wouldn't throw away is a diamond, because they're winners. I probably would keep the clubs as well, so we've got a chance of a club finesse. So the only card you can really throw away here is a small spade. So they've won those three hearts. They were always going to win those hearts, to be honest. That was inevitable. We knew that. And we had to give the lead away to set the diamonds up. So probably a little bit glad we're not in three no trumps. Um, albeit we might be able to make now that everything's gone nicely so far. Now, this hand is on lead. Um, interesting what they do here. They're probably going to opt for a spade lead now, based on the fact they've got spade length, and also because they can lead top of a sequence, forcing a big card out from us. If they do lead a club, we can see that that will help us, because it takes the club finesse for us. So let's say they switch to the queen of spades. That's the most likely card they play next. We play the ace of spades. We want to win the lead over there, because we want to catch these diamonds. Play a small spade. We play a small spade, so we win. And now we cash those set up diamonds, these two diamonds. So we're going to play these two, they're winners. They're going to throw something away. All they need to do is keep their clubs held, so they can throw these two spades, or they can throw a spade and a club, either, doesn't really matter. Let's say they throw those two spades. We can throw a spade and a club, like so. And they're going to throw probably two clubs, although maybe a club and a spade, doesn't really matter what they do now. Their hand's rather irrelevant, unfortunately. And now is the critical moment. How greedy do we feel? We currently have six tricks. We won the Queen of Hearts. Uh, we won four diamond tricks and we won the Ace of Spades. That's six. So we now have our contract. We play a spade to the King, which is a winner. And we play the Ace of Clubs, which is also a winner. So that gives us our eight tricks. How greedy are we for the remainder of the tricks? So interestingly, we know that there are no more red cards left. The hearts were cashed out by the opponents and we've cashed the diamonds out ourselves. The opponents only have black cards left. That means if we take the club finesse, we play a low club to the jack, if that loses to the king, they will have to give us the lead back to the ace of clubs or the king of spades because they only have black cards left. So what that means is this finesse is a free shot. We take the club finesse. If it fails, uh, well, we take our two tricks and make our contract. If it wins, we make an extra trick, so we make plus one. And it is a risk-free play because no one has any suits they can cash. We can club finesse at no risk. We could also lead the queen of clubs and try and trap the king, but it's essentially the same thing. Um, so I would now club finesse in the hope we get a bonus extra trick as such. Low club, low club, finesse the jack. If this wins, great. If it doesn't win, we're still safe. As it happens, it wins because the club finesse works. So we actually now are going to manage to escape this dodgy two no trumps with actually nine tricks in total. We made four diamonds, 
We made two clubs, we made two spades, and we made the Queen of Hearts a trick one, which is nine tricks in total. I want to point out, we shouldn't be in three no trumps here. In fact, we're very lucky to make two no trumps. We needed the Queen of Hearts to hold at trick one, we needed the hearts breaking four and four between the opponents, and we needed the club finesse to succeed. All of those things were required. Oh, and also the diamonds breaking. All of those things are required to make three no trumps, so we definitely shouldn't be in three. In fact, we're fortunate to make two.